Peace and love, family. Peace and love. Welcome to another edition of Judah's Den, your community empowerment show where determination, effort, and necessity are your keys to success. I'm Brother James, your whole Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to the Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Family, tonight we have been talking to the brothers all week. But one of the things I've learned, the topic of women comes up. And I've sat in several meetings where men tried to give me advice about women. And there were certain things that they said to me, I had to come home and ask my wife. And majority of the, the advice that men gave me, my wife debunked all of it. I was sitting in, in, a, in a meeting one time and a, and, a, and a brother said on stage, he said, you know how the women get in their moods. And if anybody that knows me, I ask questions. I was like, hey, wait, wait, what do you mean by a woman getting her moods? And he asked me at the time, how long you been married? I was, I think I had been married like two or three years at the time. He said, well, he said, stay married and you'll find out. That didn't sit well with me. So I, I can't come home. And talk to my wife. What did he mean about being in the mood? So my wife had to break some things down for me. So we talk all week long. There's still a, a men's conference, but I've always wanted to bring on a woman's perspective. I've sat on I've sat on and and uh, different uh, ministries, and I actually sat on committees that actually put the men's conferences together, and I will always suggest. Why don't we bring a woman in and let her give her perspective on what she sees that we're not doing? I was always shut down. So I guess God heard my prayer because I got my own platform now. So I can do what I want to do. So without further ado, ladies, how you all doing tonight? Hey. Right. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is indeed a pleasure for you. I, I appreciate you all coming on tonight, taking time out of your busy schedule. To grace us with your presence and i just want to say to everyone out there that's watching this live or watching the replay i'm gonna say it like i've always said it all week long get your pens your paper take notes because some jewels are going to be dropped tonight so instead of me taking the advice of men about women why don't i bring on three brilliant women that can actually tell us well, we're screwing up at. So I'm gonna start with um with you first, Sister Andrea. Just introduce yourself and 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 tell us in your own opinion, on your observation, when it comes to manhood, what what is your opinion and what is your experience when it comes to manhood? If I'm standing in front of you like I am right now, and I say, uh, Sister Andrea, explain to me manhood. What would you say to me? Can you repeat the last part of that question? You broke up just a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, ex explain, uh, first, introduce yourself, and then um, tell us your your view. When it, when it comes to manhood, how would you describe it? Wow, OK. Well, um, I am Sister Andrea Muhammad. And uh, I, I first, if I can, I, I would be remiss if I don't first give glory and honor to God, because he is the author of everything. And he is the author of the idea that you had to have us 
on your form and to take advantage of um, the opportunity to put some women on a platform that was designed and um, put together to encourage men and to empower men. And I don't know too many men who would walk through and go forward with that kind of idea. So I have to thank God first, but then I have to thank my brother for thinking about something like that and for mm -hmm. being and and for being receptive to being the vessel of such a, a, a powerful idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's man. I, at the first time you said that to me, I said, you know, that is awesome. Because yep. not too many men are going to think that far and say, you know what, I'm going to have some sisters come and give their perspective and challenge some of the ideas that are being perpetrated out there, that are being uh, put out there to describe us without consulting with us. I mean, exactly. you know, exactly. where we do that at. Right? Exactly. <laughs> but um, exactly. I'm Sister Andrea Muhammad. Um, I love my brothers you know mm -hmm. i have three sons i had an excellent example of manhood in a in a a, a phenomenal grandfather who raised mm -hmm. an equally phenomenal son who is my father you know and so when you talk about manhood i've had great examples mm -hmm. and because i had great examples i was uh i was attracted strongly attracted to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, mm -hmm. who is uh, who is my spiritual guide, you know. And so when I saw him, I recognized something that I already had. And that is usually something you don't hear us who are in the Nation of Islam say. Usually you hear us say that we found something that we were looking for. But mm -hmm. I had such great men in my life, and I wanted to continue to put more great men into my life. Right. So I, I have an idea of what manhood is, and I want to apologize you all for my lighting because I'm always moving. I'm always going somewhere, coming from somewhere. But um, I, I have to I have to apologize for that. My sisters are looking so lovely right there. We can see their faces. You all see me. I look like a little just light in the darkness. <laughs> You know, uh, but I, always, I apologize for that. I always see you, sister. Always beautiful. Anyway, always, you always looking beautiful. Okay, and always got some awesome to say, some good information to to to, to tell to say. You know, exactly. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Okay. Can y'all hear me? So. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 So um, when you when you talk about manhood and what that means to me, as I said before, I had examples. I, I had a grandfather who was in the military, was a good husband, was a good father, provided for his family, supported his wife and elevated her, supported his children and elevated and empowered them, loved them, provided a spiritual foundation, a safe place to grow up with, and education, taught them how to cook, taught them how to build, taught them how to take care of money, um, took care of the community, was a pillar in the community, had a home, um, knew business, you know, knew how to give, was charitable, was humble, was neat. I have a picture of manhood. Manhood is not defined by our um, gender. Mm -hmm. You are not a man because you have genitalia that says that you are male. Being mm -hmm. a man and being male are two different things. While one is required for the other, it is not a prerequisite for success in being a man. Mm -hmm. Anybody nowadays, and I hate to say this, but anybody nowadays can have that anatomy you can right. start off as one gender nowadays and go turn into the other. But that That's does right. not mean you are successful in manhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So That's when right. we talk about manhood, it encompasses character, spirituality, um, intelligence. It encompasses integrity, honesty, mm -hmm. trust. It encompasses love, compassion. It encompasses fatherhood even when you don't yet have children mm 
just right. as being a woman encompasses motherhood, even when you have not yet given birth. Mm -hmm. So there are so many aspects that I think that we've gotten away from. And it's not that brothers can't recapture what everybody kind of is dismissing now. You know, we live in a society where being a man really is almost frowned upon. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let that marinate. (laughs) Being a real man is almost frowned upon. Taking care of your family? Shoot, she better have a job, work two or three, and take care of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, yeah. rearing your children, being involved in their development. I work in education. We had an open house this past weekend, and we had to thank three men who showed up because we normally see the moms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So something has That's gone true. diametrically opposed to the nature in which men were designed. And mm-hmm. if we study God, God, he is um, emphatically the characteristic, the supreme characteristics he identifies and he epitomizes the, the supreme characteristics of manhood mm-hmm. and womanhood, if you understand. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because right. he is the complete Amen. <laughs> but that manhood thing that he encompasses, that he exemplifies, it is being the ultimate provider, the ultimate educator, the ultimate spiritual leader, the ultimate supporter, the ultimate empowering being. It mm-hmm. is the one who is going to support and be there. He is our only friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. And so that's what being a man is. That's it. <laughs> see, I knew. You, see, this is this is why I want because I know women are, women are gonna bring it straight. Sometimes we tend to back off a little bit when we're talking to brothers. But I know that the mothers are gonna tell us like it is, and sometimes men squirm in their seats because they don't. A lot of times they don't want to hear from a woman. But how in the world can you function in society as a man without the woman? I that that just behooves me. But a lot of brothers go that route. Sister Shelly, entrepreneur, community leader, community activist. I see your work consistently. I've purchased products from you. So I know the type of sister that you are. Now, when I was growing up, my my dad was a man and he he encompassed responsibility around the house. So when my dad had to go off somewhere and we didn't do what we were supposed to do, he showed manhood in front of my mother. So whenever I didn't do what I was supposed to do, she automatically recognized it. As uh, Sister Andrea was saying, the example that was set in front of her. So my mother knew what a man was supposed to be. And so when I acted out of character, she knew it because it was seen in my father. So Sister Shelley, when you think about manhood and when it comes to a man in the home and a man in the community, what would you describe manhood to be when you when you look at men? Where is it that we are slipping that we think we got it, but we actually don't have it? Where is it? What can you? How can you uh, guide us back into the place where we need to be from a woman's perspective? Okay, um, I will say uh, responsibility and accountability. Mm. You know, are two very important factors in in in, in what I would say manhood uh, is. Um, being knowing what you are responsible for, knowing um, mm-hmm. when to hold yourself accountable for what you're not doing. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Knowing when to hold yourself accountable and knowing what you are responsible for and being responsible for, as as uh, Sister uh, Sister Mohammed said, at knowing knowing uh, you know being responsible for your family. You know what I'm saying? Of being a, being a, being there for your children and not just being the breadwinner and coming in and making sure all the bills are paid, but actually spending quality time with the children right. and, mm-hmm. and, and the children learning from you and the children seeing that example of him being responsible for the household. You know what right. I'm saying? So responsibility mm-hmm. is a very big factor to me. And I and, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, I did not have a whole lot of growing up. I didn't have a lot of good examples of manhood 
My mother mm-hmm. and my father separated when I was like seven, but I did mm-hmm. see my father, you know, my, my dad was a weekend dad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I saw my dad every other weekend. He picked me up, but I will say this. He showed, he instilled, he, he instilled very good family values in me in regards mm-hmm. to me knowing my family and where I could, you know, my grandma and, you know, he take me, you know, he made sure I knew my family. He made sure that I was well, uh, you know, grounded in the the Harris family. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And he 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 is still, and he taught me to cook as well. You know, he taught me. I learned a lot of lot of good things from my father. But unfortunately, I didn't get to like grow up with him um, and my mom together at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and I was. Um, I'm the baby of the family. So all of my sisters and brothers are like old enough to be my parents. So my brothers were very good examples for me um, as well as men. They were hardworking. Um, Only one of my brothers uh, uh, is a father. My other two didn't have children. But um, Mm -hmm. my um, oldest brother, he was a great example um, uh, of a man. He was hardworking. He took care of his family. He made sure everybody, he made, he even came over our house and made sure we were straight. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So my, my brother was a very good example, um, is a very good example. He actually lives in North Carolina now, but my other two okay. brothers are deceased now. But, um, oh, okay. um, my, my brother was a very good example. And then, um, I have uncles that were very good examples, but I, I um, my father, he he didn't grow up in the, I didn't grow up with him, but um, he instilled a lot of good values in me, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, I just think that responsibility as well as accountability are two great factors um, and great characteristics that manhood consists of. Okay, okay. responsibility and accountability. That is so so true, Coach CC. Life coach, counselor, scientist. Hey, man, look, I, I, tonight I have three, not just outwardly beautiful women on, on this show. I have three brilliant minds on this show. So we're not going to pull no punches tonight. Coach CC. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. I'm here. Okay, okay. Um, your perspective on manhood you're a busy woman you got your stuff together okay obviously with all three of you you don't have time for nonsense okay that's the one thing that i love about my wife she didn't have no time for nonsense which means i had to step my game up when i came out those streets okay was it hard yeah it was hard because i was fighting against myself okay so being the the responsible intelligent woman that you are when you what do you see that we're not doing out here because i'm hearing all of this and and, you know here's the sad part and i think all three of you have heard this when it comes to the black community the problem in the black community from what i've been hearing and i think a lot of these brothers are just in their feelings (laughs) they're blaming the black woman for the problems in the black community. And I can listen to them all day long. Okay, let me bring my sister in so she can rebuttal everything you just said. So what is manhood from your perspective? Thank you, thank you, thank you all for, um, well, thank you, sir, for having me on the show. And it's good to see these beautiful ladies. I'm so excited to be in their presence, yes. Likewise. Um, <laughs> I'm Coach CC, and I'm a life scientist, and that, that means so much, but my main focus is that I help women um, be comfortable in the weight as they get to their next, right? And so I know you all are probably like, what is that? But, you know, just give me a call, and I'll explain that to you. And I can't wait to the day where I can say I help men. But but I don't think I don't think these men ready for me just yet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to keep up with women, and then we gonna just go on from there. Okay. <laughs> so why I don't think men are ready? Hey, I'm glad that's a great lead in because that answers your question, brother James. Um, you know, this is gonna be a tough show for me because my my dad passed away just a few days ago, and so um, this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The smile is genuine because 
I have so much to smile for and I, I'm so blessed, but it's very difficult um, right now, especially when, um, you know, family is just not acting like they should act, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot on my shoulder, you know, planning everything and, you know, it's just difficult. But when I can get the moment to smile, when I can get the moment to talk about something positive and, and just, you know, mem remember him um, and all the awesomeness that he was, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Right. So my dad was a great dad. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he was a great example of a leader. And so I believe that a lot of men um, are lacking in, in this leadership piece. Mm -hmm. And what that means. And I'm so glad that um, Sister Andrea had mentioned, you know, the structure that God has where we have the head. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, the, the, the other components of the human being mm -hmm. and, and what that means. And leadership is one role that if our men um, embraced, mm -hmm. then we could make a huge impact and a huge difference despite the obstacles and the things that have been placed in our way strategically by the powers that be, right? That's what we're going to call them, the powers that be. And so leadership. Another thing is um, vulnerability, right? Ooh, uh, nobody likes to be vulnerable, right? I don't, I, don't, I don't like to be vulnerable. I actually had to learn over the decades, because that's how long it took, um, <laughs> what that meant and, and how 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 to get it, how, what, what that meant and then how that worked. Right. And so because of the life that I was raised in, right. Being, you know, violated as a child and, you know, um, having a mother addicted to crack and, you know, my father struggled with alcoholism. He was 40 years clean and sober, you know what I mean? Um, so that even seeing that triumph, but all the atrocities that I had to experience as a little girl, of course, I had these walls put up. I didn't know that they were walls, you know, but but I did, right? And it, and it was a sense to help me to cope, right? These coping mechanisms, um, because I didn't know God as much as I should have known him, right? And so now I know. And so the more and more I grew closer to God, I understood that it was okay to be vulnerable. And so I believe that if our men grow more and more closer to God, then that they'll too, they too will understand, you know, the importance of being vulnerable and knowing that it's okay to not be okay. Like they, you don't have to have everything all together. You have to let someone in to be able to assist you. You don't have to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. And as our brothers do, because the purpose of design, you know, that doesn't have to happen. We're there, you know, their children are there, their mothers, their aunts, all these strong women and men. So I would love to see the the barbershops come back where men got together. That's missing too. Like, who are these men talking to? Men? About us? I, you know, I sometimes, you know, I talk to, I, I, I joke, but it's, I, I, I'll be serious. My girlfriends, you know, um, you know, a lot of them don't have male friends, right? And I don't get it. You know, maybe because I'm a single woman, you know, I, but I was married for 15 years. Like, look, you know, but and I still have male friends. <laughs> I mean, where y'all getting y'all information from, ladies? You know what I mean? <laughs> like <laughs> women, you know, but, <laughs> but I digress. But yes, um, I also wanted to mention that I was having a serious conversation about this, the this, the the. Um, the plight of the black man and where he where he may be in my life or some some of our lives or just in our communities. And, you know, as you probably all see the self-care thing that a lot of us women are on. Right. You know, we, we got groups. I help women to get to be comfortable as they get to their necks. Right. So we got I mean, we are like gurus of meditation now. We, we at the gym. We looking good, smelling good. We are good. Right. <laughs> Um, now I'm, 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 you know, we got issues, you know, you know, I ain't saying we're perfect, but it's a lot of that on the right uprising. And I'm saying to myself, okay, all of us is getting, all of us are trying to get it together, but then who are we going to go home to broken men? Like I, what? Right. right. The, the puzzle is this one plus one 
is equal to two, but something ain't adding up, right? And so I sincerely, in my heart, and this is going to be strange for me to say because I, I love us women getting the help that we need, but I sincerely, in my heart, would trade us from all the things that we're doing if our counterpart could do it. it like, we only had one choice of who could do it. I would rather the men do it. Because I know that when they fall in place, when they get it together, we together. We're going to be all right. You know what I mean? I just need them to get it together because with that leadership, with that power and the kings that they are, oh, man, we're going to be unstoppable. So I, I would gladly trade. But, you know, that's living in the fantasy world right now. So, <laughs> uh, Sister Andrea, go uh, CC talk about, she said, Men that are broken, and I asked I asked uh, Chapman John this last night. Mm -hmm. So many men are carrying a lot of weight around them, and they have someone right there. Because I'll give you an example. I was carrying a lot of weight prior to Maria and I getting married, and I'm going to be honest with you. It was like several years into the marriage where I finally realized that. Um, I was able to get over those things I was carrying. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I felt like it wasn't fair to her for me to put that weight on her because she was carrying something too. But one of the things that I learned is I was sensitive enough to see the things that Maria was going through and I was able to help her through it. Why is it, in your opinion, that so many of us men, and how does it damage you all when we are carrying this stuff around inside of us and we won't go seek out a Coach CC to get help? We won't go see, seek out a Coach Vaughn to get help, to talk to somebody. We won't go seek out therapists to get, this, get, to get the help that we need. Instead, it comes out in anger. And I had said earlier this week, sometimes uh, men confuse anger with being hurt. A man will be quick to say he's angry, but less quick to say he's hurt because hurt sounds too feminine to a lot of us. So just for the men out there right now that's listening, we us we carrying around all this weight and not allowing ourselves to get healed, how is that damaging the woman that we're with? How is how is it is it possible for the woman to help us carry this weight or is it all on the man or how, how do you see that? That's, you know, that's a, a loaded question. Mm -hmm. um, Coach CC touched on self-care and how women are on this quest, uh, especially of late, to really love ourselves. And I, I feel what she said when she said if, if we had to make a choice, she would choose a man. But I think that we have to be at the point where we don't have to we don't have to feel like we have to ever make that choice and the reason i say that is because you can't have success in the black community without both parties being repaired we are all suffering from some sort of trauma trauma is actually and this has been scientifically studied trauma is actually interwoven into our dna no people in the annals of history have gone through and lived to survive what we as Black people, Black men and women, particularly in North America, Central America, and South America, have gone through. And I include those other, other um, countries because the slave trade didn't stop here. Right. It went down into South America. In Brazil, you have the largest population of Black people in the diaspora other than Africa. The atrocities that we suffered, and I don't want to harp too long on slavery because I know somebody is out there thinking, well, what does that have to do with today? <laughs> but the atrocities that we suffered, the pain, the death, the disease, the humiliation, the dehumanization, the murder, the raping, the abuse, 
the sexual abuse of men, boys, women, girls, and babies, y'all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You better exactly. say it. To go over that for 400 years. Now, somebody's going to say, well, floor, uh, slavery didn't last 400. Yes, it did. It did. The very first ship that came over here with slaves on it was not actually exclusively a slave ship. The first exclusive slave ship was 1619, but the first slave ship to come over here, or the first ship that had slaves on it, was 1555, y'all. So do the math. Mm -hmm. That's 400 years. Yeah. Plus, when you plus. Take, right, plus, yeah, and we, still, plus. we still feel in the effect, the social, economic, educational, um, financial, we're still feeling the effects. So why is it that we don't think that we were mentally damaged as well? Why is it that we don't believe that we are spiritually disconnected as well? Yeah, there's some baggage. I got baggage. He got baggage. We both got to get rid of it. We should not be carrying the baggage anymore. Right. We got to let it go. But when you don't know how to let it go, all you do is continue to pick up more items to throw in the bag. Right. I deal with children and their parents. I had a boy yesterday, good student, but he's going through something and he's been going through a lot of trauma that is cyclical. He's adopted, biological parents had trauma. The trauma continue to manifest its way it, the way it does in our communities and our families. You touched on being abused as a child, sis. Many of us have been abused as children in one way or another, violated sexually, physically, emotionally, verbally, Right. All of that and abandonment from, issues, abandonment, right? Abandonment, abandonment issues, issues. Well. but right. abandonment. Cycle, my father not being there. That's like an abandonment issue. My father not being there for me every day. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Like seeing him on the weekends. That's abandonment issues. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And we so all, look, at, look at look at the look at what you just pointed out. Black men were made to abandon their families. Absolutely. It's they like were made to. Father. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly, sis. You are. No, you, hit no. it. you got we it. Were, you we, it. Were, we were made to take care of other people's babies before we took care of ours. Mm -hmm. We took care of our own. Mm -hmm. Hell, they, mm -hmm. took our they took our babies. Yes. They took our babies once we had them. Listen. They took them right out of our arms as soon as, soon as we had them. They took them from us. Listen. Us. In no. the state of Florida, during slavery, when they wanted to catch alligators, they took black babies out to those Everglades and they used them as bait. Yep. Sure so is. the baggage that we're carrying is not just the baggage of our life. We carry 400 plus years worth of baggage, y'all. Even the baggage, best yeah. and most sane appearing like black that. person needs psychological help. Right. So he came into school yesterday Absolutely. and he had a break. We write those kinds of breaks off of off as anger issues. Mm -hmm. Or he's having a real bad day. Or maybe something happened at home. I talked to my mom, mom said, this is what I've been telling you. These are the kind of anger episodes so bad. That's a trauma. Mm -hmm. I told her, I said, he needs a psych evaluation. Mm -hmm. Because what we saw was not normal anger. How many of our men are walking around without normal anger? Hell, we don't even know what no know what normal anger looks like. Because right. we're not getting the help that we need. 
And what we're doing is, Brother James, you posed that question in such um, a thought-provoking manner because you asked, should the sisters help with that baggage? See, that's part of our problem. We've been picking up that baggage too. So we're carrying the same crap. I'm, he's dropping it out of his bag, trying to get rid of it. I'm trying to help him, so I'm picking it up. Picking it up. You right. And so what we're right. doing is now we're in a constant struggle to try to build something, but the foundation is so weakened. Mm -hmm. We got to go to the core of it. We have to Absolutely. dig that nasty foundation up and replace it with what it was originally purposed to be. We have to continue to work at the spiritual connection, the mental expression of a strong spiritual connection. And then we have to work on that physical. You can't have one without the other. All three are equally important. Absolutely. If you're spiritually strong, but mentally weak and physically strong, you're going to, you're not going to survive. Right. If you're physically weak, but spiritually strong, and mentally strong, you're not going to survive. If you're spiritually weak, but mentally, you got to have all three. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we juggle. We work on one, drop it, go work on another, drop mm -hmm. it. In the meantime, we're picking up all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay to let it go. As Sister Sharia said, you got to get help. Mm -hmm. When we mm -hmm. listen to the brother... Oh, what was his name? And I, it won't come to me right now. But he talked about mental health. This is a millionaire. Said every black person, George Fraser, Dr. George Fraser, a couple of years ago when we did the um, the Zoomathon, yeah. you know, when we did the, when we did it for our dear beloved sister and her cause. You know, Lady Joy, may Allah be pleased with her beautiful soul. I say, I say. You know, but when the brother was on there talking to us and then he went into how every black person should have a therapist. This is a brother who's a millionaire. If you saw him on the street, you would not assume based on our stigma on mental health that mm -hmm. he sees a therapist. Mm -hmm. We go to a dentist. Hmm. Ladies, mm -hmm. don't we go to the OBGYN? Mm -hmm. And if you're not mm -hmm. going, sisters, go. Brothers, <laughs> don't you see your doctor? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We go to our primary care physicians. If you have any um, health issues, you go and get those things checked out. Mm -hmm. Precautionary measures. Right, right. Get the stuff taken care of and then continue to mm -hmm. go to maintain your sanity, to maintain Absolutely. your health. Those of us who are in the church or the mosque or the temple, we go to those places, right, for our spiritual health. Mm -hmm. We go to the gym. Do you work out, sisters, and then stop and be like, well, I'll come back next year? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maintenance is all the time. It is. So Amen. even when you get it right, you got to maintain it. So don't none of us have any right to pick up nobody else's bags and carry them. Right. Hell, we need Absolutely. to try to figure out how to help them to drop them. Unpack them together. That's you know right. Get rid uh, of let's them. Unpack them let's yes. unpack these bags together. You know That's what I'm right. saying? That's I got baggage. You got trash. baggage. Let's unpack together, baby. Let's do this That's together. Right. You know That's what I'm right. saying? And let's, let's throw away the things that we together. don't need to keep. I Just say. because it's in the bag don't mean we need it. Listen, when you clean your house, don't you go through and say, oh, haven't worn this in three years. Let's get rid of it. Right. It's okay. It is. It is. It's Give it okay. Up. You know? Right. Give, so right. in short and long, that's my answer. <laughs> we love it. Absolutely. You know, I want to I wanna go back to uh, one of the brothers who, who posted, uh, Brother Anthony. He said, some males suffer in silence due to betrayal and broken trust and hesitates with letting those walls down to others. He's speaking to me. Adverse childhood experiences has made our ability to not recognize them for generations, nor were we taught 
how to heal. Right. And that hit home for me when he said that because that was a, some things that I did, Sister Shelley. I, I, I suffered in silence. You know, some of the things I didn't deal with coming up as an adult. Now, all of a sudden, here comes Maria. Here comes my girls. And so the, I had, to, as you spoke about earlier, accountability. Mm -hmm. And I realized that me holding this stuff in and not getting the help that I need with all these people around me. And so I purposely put people around me that when I need to talk to them, when I need to make that phone call, I will. Because all of the men and women around me are not yes men and women. I know if I give Coach CC a call, she's going to tell me the truth, whether I want to hear it or not. Yeah. So I can give Brother Gothia and Sister Andrea a call. They're going to tell me what I need to hear. The same is with you and Ken. Ken and I have been friends for years. Ken never sugarcoated anything with me. If I needed to hear it, he told me. That's just the way it was. Even though it hurt to come against me, you know, to come out of this, this, this mental block, blockage that I had, it hurt, but I grew, you know? And so I want to get into this right here, Sister um, Sister Shelley, mm -hmm. the disrespect. Mm -hmm. And I and I told the brothers the other night, uh, brother brother Ken and and, and knowledge and and, and um, the other brothers, the disrespect that I'm seeing when it comes to, and I'm speaking to black men, the disrespect that black men are showing black women. I think it's 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 a trend, Sister Andrea. It's, it's something that's trending, so everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. And, and, I, and I, I was doing a video on TikTok the other day, and I said, be careful. I said, everybody on social media is not who they say they are. Mm -hmm. Because I'm seeing a lot of women, I mean, I'm talking about the, the disrespect that we are showing our women. We call you all everything but what you are, a woman, a goddess. A queen. We use the B word. We refer to you as hoes. There are celebrities out there that have gotten rich of calling the black woman a bitch. So I need you to speak to us and all the men who are listening. And I want you, those of you out there listening, share this with a man that you know so he can hear it. Talk to us about the disrespect or how does it make you feel? When a man is calling you something that you're not, you're a hardworking woman, you're a very intelligent woman, and you're doing everything you possibly can to make a living, and then here comes this gentleman that walks up, and I'm uh, I'm not even gonna call him that, and just it's like we've said this word for so long to now women call each other that. I remember I was at a I was at a house, and I was I had to get into this room, and the the young lady was opening trying to open the door for him because it was stuck, and so as I stood there. And um, she she looked at me and she said, I, I guarantee you I know what you're thinking. I said, what do you mean? She said, I get, I bet you're saying in your mind, I wish this bitch would hurry up. I said, whoa. I said, why would you think I'll call you that? Then her boyfriend walked out. That hit me. It hit me right there because I saw his demeanor the, the entire time I was there. So talk to us and tell us how does that make you feel when men, when we are so disrespectful to our women, when you don't, you, when you all definitely don't deserve it. Okay, I think she fell off. Okay, well, I pose that question to you, um, Cosici. The disrespect. <laughs> Thank you on mute. <laughs> I'm gonna do that again. I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 disrespect that we show you all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um insane. You know, and the, the sad truth about that is that I've gotten numb to it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And I shouldn't have never, I should never be, but I, we're so inundated, right? Through social media, through mass media, through all music. It's kind of like um, in one ear and not the other. So I'm kind of numb to it. There's moments that I get upset. Now, I'm going to super duper get upset if you call me that. Right. I've right. never been called that um, pretty much by anyone to my face, let alone my man. What? 
a, none of that. Like, and I don't understand how a woman could accept that. Right? It, right. it puzzles me, but I understand. Right? This goes back to what Sister Andrea was saying from slavery. I mean, just it all started a long time ago. So we all have baggage to unpack, and that's some of the things and some of the work that I must do to be not numb to something that I should be outraged with every single time I hear it to the point where I'm like, turn this off. I don't want to hear that, et cetera, et cetera. I know that I can't control, you know, the things that are out there. I can only control what I answer to. And I can only teach those women around me, starting with my daughters and whomever, that they too should not accept that and answer to such atrocities, right? So I, I'm a queen. It's when you start worrying, knowing your worth and whose you are and who you are, then th I'm certain that contributes to me being like, yeah, yeah, whatever, <laughs> because it just doesn't apply, you know? And so if it doesn't apply, I let it fly in some respects, but it, it, it has to start with that self-worth and your love for yourself to, to, to even start to become angry at what's ever out there. So yeah. Yeah. James, I'm I'm glad that you, you know, felt the way you felt when she said that because you should. And if more men felt like that, then you know, we wouldn't even it it starts with okay, life. Okay, hold up. It's not life and death is in the power of your tongue. I've been saying the scripture all wrong all my life, y'all. I don't and I was like, I've been saying it wrong. The word says <laughs> death and life is in the power of your tongue. Death proceeds. Because mm -hmm. the negative words that, that come out of our mouth are twice as powerful as the positive ones. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand mm -hmm. that when we say those negative things, it's, it's more of a beat down. And it might take two, three times those positive words to build someone back up. And so it's so important. And so when we as women and men begin to understand that, then we will start to move in another direction. Right. And so um, you just think well, if you just think about that word, bitch, just think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a female dog. Right. right? We all. Right. 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 We all have, but I'm, yeah, we all been around some dogs, some real ones, you know, mm -hmm. and the bitch is the female dog in heat. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. If we've all been around bitches, you know, no female dogs in heat. Right. right. Like, it's kind of crazy. Right. You'd be like, why is she acting crazy? You know, she just be like going up to the fence, like, hey, anybody, you know, like, mm -hmm. are you? Mm -hmm. Is this mm -hmm. what we are calling ourselves an animal that walk on four legs, that act crazy during a certain season just to get pregnant? Like, right. really, we have to understand that no matter what we think we're saying or mean by that word, it is what it is. Right. And so when you say it, words have power that out you can dance it up all you want. It, it is what it is. And that's what you're reducing another human being to, to an animal, to a dog, to a specific situation and their biological clock cycle when they acting crazy. Right. So, you know, no. the, the four agreements, one of the four, I try to live by what is known. I believe his name is Ruiz or Juan something. I think that's his name. And the four agreements, one of them is, you know, be impeccable with your word. That's the reason that's an agreement. So we need to come into agreement with being impeccable with our word. It's ignorant when we had to substitute words because we don't know how to say anything else. Keep, say say what it is. You, you acted angry. You're, you're acting upset. You're acting mean. It's so many words. Mm -hmm. Irritated. You, vocabulary. Uh, you can say it in Spanish, you can say it in French, you can say it in Japanese. You could learn so mm -hmm. many other things besides reducing a word because you don't know what else to say. It's so ignorant, and you call somebody out of their names. You call that's your that's somebody's mom, that's somebody's daughter. How would you like if somebody exactly. called your mom or your daughter, you know, one of those words, and you'd be ready to fight? That doesn't even make sense. You know, right. like, at the end of the day. This year, I've recognized, I sat there and said, we all crazy. 
Yep. Crazy. Mental illness. I that we crazy. It is. <laughs> and, and I think it comes out of their brokenness too. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And that's, and that's okay because it comes out of their brokenness because when if, okay. if you all, have no respect for yourself, you're definitely right. not gonna respect anybody else. So that and word can just be used it, so freely and frivolously. But when when they mm -hmm. under when you understand the reason, I mean why they started using that word, that word was used towards women. The um the word bitch as you know it is a female dog. Pimps were using that word towards their prostitutes because you can train right. a dog. Okay, you can right. train yeah. dog. So pimps want to train their prostitutes. So that's why they started using that word. And to think the the contributions that the black woman has made to civilization as a whole to even think you would put her and that word in the same category is just really ridiculous to hurt me. people hurt people you know what i'm saying exactly. we've made major contributions to this world shoot we the reason why everybody exists right, you know what right. I mean? so my thing that is part. to use that word towards a towards a black woman is just absolutely ridiculous you know, and a lot of people don't even under, and, and and for a female to say, "Oh, I'm a boss bitch, I'm a boss bitch, I'm I'm a bad," you know, come on, man, why would you want to be that? You know what I'm right. saying? A, right. a, a, a female dog can't be boss. A female dog can, mm -hmm. can't be, nope. you know, bad. You know, so why would you even call yourself that? And that's and that's question. where it has to stop. And you know, just like chivalry, people say chivalry is dead, but when women Mm -hmm. Expect it, men have to respect it. So if you're That's gonna right. if you gonna call yourself that, what you think he gonna call you? He gonna call you the same thing you calling yourself. You well, know, Zeta said that slave masters called us the B word first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, it, it's 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 um it goes back to that dehumanization. Right, it, right. It, it, here's what you have to understand about um the oppressor. The oppressor understood that women are the first teachers. If you can convince a woman that she is less than, then she's going to produce offspring who will consider themselves less than. It's very basic psychology. And that's the, that is the frustrating thing. Mm -hmm. This man has not changed his game since, the, since he began, since he came on the, on, on the earth 6,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. He has come up with a plan that is so simple that people don't see it coming. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She froze. Yeah, uh, Sister Andrea, you can hear me. Uh, you had froze. Um, yeah, I did a, I did a short. Um, I probably was about fifteen seconds. A video on TikTok, and basically what I was doing, I was I was basically lip syncing to a short fifteen second um, clip that Minister Farrakhan did, and in there he said because I looked at the broad, um, at, you know I looked at the, the I caught the big picture and what he was saying, and in there he said he said there's no such thing as a no good woman. Every no good woman was made no good by no good man. So I caught what he was saying. And Coach CC, when I tell you that the brothers came at me in, the, in my comment section, well, I, I'm at that point now where, you know, I welcome it because I understood the broader picture and what he was saying. Because many of them came with a narrow, looking through a narrow lens as we he was just talking about the black community. And that wasn't it. Everything started out somewhere. Even if a even if a woman was taught to psychologically turn against us, mm -hmm. and we were taught to psychologically turn against them, it started somewhere. Okay. And yeah. since men was in charge, like the sister said earlier, that word came from our slave masters. And from that point, and now I have to, I have to admit this. Now I mean, mm -hmm. that's never been a part of my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I've gotten angry at a lot of women. They've gotten angry at me. I've been in a lot of relationships prior to my wife where it didn't work out. Some of it was my fault. Some of it was their fault. But I chose another way to handle it. 
letting the allowing that word to come out of my mouth, it must first be in my heart. Okay. And so I can get angry with somebody and not call them, call a woman a bitch or call a a man the N-word. I guess I can say the word nigga on here. We say it all the time. So I discipline myself to not use those words. Yeah, we can get in an argument all day. My wife and I can have a discussion. We can get in an argument with that word. No matter how angry I get with her, that word will never come out of, um, come out of my mouth. And um, brother, um, brother Ashan said the foundation of our culture has been poisoned to believe that black love is a sign of weakness. Uh, Rosetta said, um, she said, internet is demonizing everyone who has allowed themselves to be controlled by it. I said the other day, you know, be careful of who you follow on uh, social media, everybody who's not who they say they are. And uh, a wise man talk, uh, brought up the, the Willie Lynch letter. Mm -hmm. And so we, my whole thing is this. We have to come to a place where we can start healing. Yes, I can get mad at women all day long and they can get mad at me, but we have to get to that place where we got to start healing amongst each other. You know, people have gotten artists, have gotten rich of disrespecting the, the community that they say they support. Do not come and make a donation to my nonprofit while at the same time you're calling my wife a bitch. You can keep your money. You're not going right. to pay me off to disrespect my wife. Right. And that's what was done. We can we can we can blame whoever we want to blame. We can blame the communities that we come from. But here's the thing, though. When I hear a lot of men say that, based on where they came from and the upbringing, they sit there and tell me their upbringing. So, which tells me, okay, you already know this. So, what do we do to fix this? Right, that part. You no. Know? And so I was when I was coaching. When I coached. Uh, I didn't get a chance to coach this year because of my surgery. But when I coached, and I, and I talked about this last night, um, I, when I was coaching the 10 to 12 year old boys, there was a coach on, out there. And during the first half of the game, he was energized. He was all into it, Coach CC. He was all into it. Then all of a sudden, I noticed that he wasn't participating anymore. He was sitting down on the other side of the field. And I walked down there to him and I said, What's going on? He said, Well, he said, he said, next, he said, next week, he said, I'm going to be on the other side of the fence. I said, What's going on? He said, every time I try to speak, the other coaches out talk me. If you all don't want me out here, I have no business being out here. So I heard him. So he, he, he went on and on and on. And I knew where it was coming from. He was just, his son played. And his son carried around a lot of anger, just like his dad did. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. So I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, so before you leave, and I pointed at one of the players, I said, tell me a little bit, a little something about Xavier. He was like, what about him? I said, tell me something about him. He said, he's a good kid. You know, he works hard. I said, he don't trust men. And he was like, what do you mean? The kid feels like every time he, a man is in his life, he leaves. So he don't trust men. And he asked me, how did you know that? I said, I talked to the mother. He doesn't trust men. Uh, the father, uncles, brother, everybody that he got attached to walked away. So in his mind, that's what men do, you know? And so I made it my business to stay attached to him throughout the entire season, as well as the other boys. But here's the thing, Coach CC, we won't, number one, we won't admit that we have a problem, men. We won't admit, and at the end of the day, yes, I can talk about what women have done to me. I can talk about that, but I can handle that. It's what I'm putting out towards you all that I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. I can handle the threats coming at me. I can handle the name calling. I mm -hmm. can handle all that stuff. But it's what I'm giving out is what God is paying attention to. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, you know, I posed that, that, that question to you, Sister mm -hmm. Shelley, that us, we are here, men are here. So what is it that we can do? What can, what, where can we start? What can men start to begin to start healing in our community. What can men go right now? What can we do? What advice can you give the men right now for those of us out there who are hurting, those of us out there who are confused, and, and mainly those of us who are willing to admit that there's a problem going on up here? What can we start from? 
<laughs> okay, back to what um, Coach Cece said earlier in regards to vulnerability. Mm. They have to allow themselves to become vulnerable enough to share that they need help. You know what I'm saying? In, the first step to intervention is admitting that you need help, you know? And if you feel like you don't need help, then guess what? You're going to still be locked in all that hurt and all of that trauma. And it's gonna you're going to keep screwing it out on your kids and screwing it out on your woman and screwing it out and getting fired from jobs because you can't handle your anger and stuff like, you know, a lot of men lose jobs because they ha they so angry. You know, mm -hmm. lose jobs all the time. They get into it with everybody. Get, in there, get into it with somebody at the gas station. Somebody say something, and they just get, you know what I'm saying? Because they have so much anger in them yep. that they have not mm -hmm. dealt with. You know what I'm saying? So they have mm -hmm. to first allow themselves to be vulnerable enough to admit that they need some help, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, you, you and I had a conversation uh, a while back on one of your podcast shows. Um, in regards to what Sister Andrea said about the um, trauma from slavery, when I said at the mm -hmm. beginning of the, you know, the turn of the century, we we went into, you know, we came out of slavery and that was it. We was just through, through out there, no help, no nothing. All of the people from all of the, all of the, the, the descendant, even descendants of the Holocaust are still getting mental help right now they're still seeing they and it's all paid for you know what i'm saying they don't think we need that we need that and and, and mm -hmm. she's right it is embedded in our dna that that trauma is embedded that is like generations of after generations it's just like constant trauma nothing but trauma hurt pain rape pillage all kind of stuff like that just embedded in us you know so a lot of the anger comes from that you know, so right. it, it's it's just we we have to. I mean, you know, for some reason, it's been taboo or cliche in the black community to not uh, to 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 see a therapist or to you know. And I think that that a lot of people still stuck on that. Oh, I ain't crazy. I don't need to see nobody. And you know, we need mm -hmm. to get out of that. We need to we need to unlearn and relearn what it is we should be doing right now because a lot of the things that we've learned our whole life is a lot it's not and that don't even apply to us you know what i'm saying so we have to unlearn and relearn how to be and it starts mm -hmm. with healing and admitting that you need to be healed you know what i'm Absolutely. saying amen uh coach cc i want to um put this comment back up from my brother i shine oh. I'm glad because I wrote it down because I got something to say. <laughs> he but said, honestly, it has to be a collective effort. But here's the part I really like what he said. He said, men need to be able to be vulnerable without judgment or being looked at as weak. Now, with that being said, it goes back to what I said earlier. Um, the day, I, I can remember the day that I was really set free. I remember it. It wasn't the day that I decided to bring God in my life. I just, I just knew of him. Okay. But I was still wrestling with me. I knew, I knew my history, at least the, the research that I've done, but I was still wrestling with me. It wasn't until I opened up and I did what you said. I was vulnerable enough to open up, to realize that there's something going on with brother James and it's, it comes out in anger frustration. I will say these things, Sister Shelley, but I never say I was vulnerable. I would never say that I'm hurt even though I was. But it was it was at that moment when I realized that I had some issues that I cannot and I will not rely on my wife to carry for me because I knew what she was carrying. Okay? I'll give you an example. And, and, and she, you know, we, she and I talked about it. My wife grew up without a father. Okay? I knew that, okay? So um, I, could, I could not become like father, father to her because we was intimate. But those things that a father does by being there, okay? A father takes on that trauma. When she needs to lash out, I was there. The kiss on the forehead, the hugs, being around, the holding hands, walking in, walking in the park together. These things that a daughter longed to do with their father I knew that that was a burden that was that she was carrying, and so I was willing to be there for her. 
So I sacrificed everything that I was going through to be there. Not that she owed me anything back. No. But when I opened my eyes, Kosisi, and I realized that something's not right up here, that is when I started getting the help. And that is when I started allowing men into my life that can tell me the truth about myself. Now, to go back to Brother Ashan, um, yeah, he's right. You know, um, men need to be able to be vulnerable without judgment or being looked at as weak. Here was my issue with that. I wanted to be helped so bad, Kosisi. For the first five years of our marriage, I went to about five or six men's conferences a year for the first five years because I was in search of it. One of the things that I brought out of that was tough skin. If I need help that way, so I don't, this, what's going on up here, don't affect my friendship with Shelly. So it doesn't affect my friendship with you. It doesn't affect my family. Okay. So I brought on the judgment. Judge me. Judge me. You can look at me as being weak. I didn't care. I know I needed to get this fixed. And so that is what I went and I did to myself. So with that being said, and, and my wife even commented on it. You know, she said, you know, I love you. For that. You see? Hey, and, you know, and, and you, know, you know, the funny part about that, uh, Cole CC. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she didn't know I was doing it until later on in the marriage. I told her and that was one of the first time I seen my wife cry because I knew I had did a good job. Yeah, so now. we are I know, we're not allowing right? ourselves, as Shelly said, I'm holding we, back. <laughs> <laughs> we're not allowed allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, as uh, Sister Shelly said. But a lot of men equate that to being feminine. What is what is your take, Coach Cece, on a man that allows himself to be open, on a man that will come and cry to you, or a man who will come to you and tell you, I need help? Because I did that with my wife. I need help. I'm hurting. I didn't feel like I was weak, you know, regardless of how she saw me. I didn't feel like I was weak. I was trying to get some help. And if I wanted Coach Cece to stay in my life, I went and got that help so I wouldn't lose a good friend. So what do you say that say to that when you counsel men that's sitting there trying to hide that that vulnerability in them? Uh, well, you know what? So kudos to Brother King, because I did write that down. Um, and I'm, I'm about to comment that in a second. But here's the definition of vulnerable, right? I'm going it, to it's several definitions, but it says a person in need of special care, support or protection because of you know, age, disability, risk of abuse, neglect, right? I mean, mm -hmm. doesn't that sound like loving, <laughs> right? Support, care, right? And that's what it mm -hmm. is. And it's okay. We just spent, I don't know how many minutes talking about why we need special care, right? right. right. And so, and so if anybody can be vulnerable, uh, the people that have the, the melanated people, we should be able to be vulnerable and be in that space. Now, I understand what Brother King was saying, um, because everybody wants to, when they are being vulnerable, they want someone to show care. They would like the support and all those other things. So then that's twofold. One, one of the folds is that when you have a relationship with your Heavenly Father, I mean, it's just so much, I, I got to say, but, and that's a problem too, because we've been looking too much at some of our earthly fathers who may not have, you know, rose to the occasion. Mm -hmm. And now we have that same relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that is not who he is, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the issue right there. But when we look at that, when when they can become closer and, and know how much God loves you, then you can open up and not get the support back from man and not get the love back from man because you know that God got you. He will never leave nor forsake you, right? So you know that you know that you know that he will provide and that you have everything that you need. See, when you know that, you have less issues with becoming vulnerable. Now, what I teach men and women is, you know, when you can get to the point where something you said, Brother James, where you kind of don't care what people say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
oh my god you were wrong right that's, that's it. it that's it, it. That's like, right it. that is it yeah. when you like it, it doesn't matter like whether you give me the support whether you like me or what because the question is why aren't you being vulnerable what's why which who are you scared right. of right. so anytime i get in a, a quandary in my life right i always say kind of am i going to die and if the answer is no then do it like hey just do it if if somebody got something to say, they say something nasty or whatever. Okay, who are you? You're not God. I'm getting this mm -hmm. from me. You did it for you. So when you become vulnerable, then you will be able to grow and get to another place. So I mentioned earlier what I do with women. I said that you know I you know help women be comfortable in the weight as they get to their next. So what I didn't tell you is how. So mm -hmm. how on high level is that I teach them how to do this through spiritual discipline right. through spiritual guidance and thought therapy supported by thought therapy thought therapy is we have to change our minds when we mm -hmm. change what's going in what's coming out when we know what's in there because a lot of times we don't know what's in there it's in our subconscious and That's our right. subconscious is the the driver so you can say all you want. I do know how to love. But oh, if the blueprint that was written when you was three and six years old spelled everything except love, then mm -hmm. that's what's driving. And now you mm -hmm. wonder why I keep picking this man, why I keep picking this woman. You have to sit down enough to get to the core to understand that. And so that's what I teach in my programs to men and women. When you get to that point, you can say, it really doesn't matter what you think. I don't care. Right. And so when you right. can get to that, then you are going to explode in your life. You're going mm -hmm. to understand what the law of attraction is all about. You're going to be I just attracting love, power. You're going to just be this king and this queen that you have been designed and destined to be because now you understand what it takes and it doesn't matter what nobody else says. And so you have to mind your business, right? Mind your business. Mm -hmm. Let me I look up that word too. Let me. Let me define business. Okay. <laughs> business. <laughs> That's what's up, sis. Yep. <laughs> Work that has to be done or matters that have to be attended to. Mind your business. Do the work. Do what mm -hmm. has to be attended to. So, Brother James, you did the work. You knew what had to be attended to. And you did that. And so I would have cried too. I, I right. brought it to Maria. I, because, man, that touches my heart when my friends, my family, my clients get to the place where they've done the work. And, and then now mm -hmm. they're seeing the fruits of their labor. And now it's spewing over into everyone around them. Oh my God. So when you told me that, I'm, I'm ready to cry because seeds have been planted and these seeds are going to continue to grow far long after you're not here because you mm -hmm. are stopping generational curses. Right. You know I mean? Absolutely, you're, you're breaking these curses, and this is what you're doing on your show. This is what we're all of us who are represented here as women do are doing. We are keeping it real, saying, "Hey, what it is that we as women need," and let's tell it. Let's tell it like it is. And before I go, I want to tell you one more thing that a woman needs. Men, y'all listening? We need Starbucks. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> I want I want to um, address something that uh, Linda Cruz said. She said, "I think the Western world, the oppressor, has taught us that certain words are negative. When they aren't, when when they aren't, we must spiritually, emotionally, and really educate ourselves. But we but we must be open to open. We must be open. Basically, we must open our mind to change. And I and I always say this, and um and I live by it. You know, even when it comes down to you know, Sister Shelly, I can say something disrespectful to you and come back tomorrow and say, I'm sorry. But then I don't do it to you anymore. I go do it to Kosisi. Mm -hmm. So really, I'm not sorry. Right. The apology meant nothing. Because even though I offended you, I still didn't change. I just didn't do it to you anymore. But I went and did it to Kosisi. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people all the time, confession shows up in conversation. Mm -hmm. But real change shows up in behavior. Absolutely. And so I live by that. You know, confession shows up in conversation, but real change shows up in behavior. So with that being said, 
Um, Sister Shelly, um, I know we went over the time, but this this is good because I got I got I knew tonight was gonna be powerful. I knew it would. I knew it was gonna be powerful. And because I knew that a lot of men was gonna be challenged, and because there's some strong brothers on here, you know. I've been knowing uh Brother King for years, mm -hmm. you know. And so um so Sister Shelly, um being and, and and I can only imagine, you know, being the busy woman that you are, being the successful woman that you are, you know, with your business and your work in the community, you recognize procrastination and laziness real easy because it's the opposite of what you are. And I think that by us not going to get the help, you know, and my nephew was on earlier. And uh, let me see, can I pull him back up? Um, and, you know, he said, uh, he said, uh, we are all, we all need help. Absolutely. I, and, and, I, and I totally, I totally agree with that. We all need help. We, we but all it has to start somewhere. Summer. So you recognize laziness, procrastination, and excuses because that's the opposite of who you are. Mm -hmm. The same with my mother. When we wasn't doing what we were supposed to do, she saw the tenacity, she saw the drive in our father. So when we weren't doing it, she caught it. Mm -hmm. A lot of us get lazy to go get help. A lot of us get lazy. And when we don't go get that help, Coach CC, like you said, it spills out. Like I think you said this earlier, um, Shelly. It spills out and, and we can't keep a job. I know a gentleman mm -hmm. right now, attitude, mm -hmm. got fired. It, 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 it spills over to our family life. It spills over to our job. It spills over to all different types of relationship. Many of us as men, so many of us as men, we should be further along than where we are right now. And I'm not necessarily talking about finances, but we can bring finances in here. But a lot of these places that we can't go, that we can't get in, is because of a lot of our attitudes and we don't want to change. And the older we get, the more stubborn we get. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I know by knowing you personally that you are a doer. Yes, you talk, but you are a doer because I see it. Your shop is a place of healing. It's not just about what you sell. It's your spirit that's so beautiful. So whenever I come around you, it's not just about, okay, you know, I got something, James, for you. You know, and, and I thank you and Ken so much for those of you who don't know. Those of you who don't know, I went through brain surgery back in August. Brother Ken and Sister Shelley has been a blessing to me. You know, Ken took time off of his busy schedule. He came over here. They had put me some sea moss and stuff together. Always giving me a call. Always checking on me. And I love you all for that. It's you a know? pleasure. It's yes. a pleasure, James, to do, so, to do things. Talk to us about not taking care of responsibility and being lazy, procrastinating, not doing the things we're supposed to do. And instead of me doing that, I blame you. Talk to us about that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Like, I guess it goes back to the whole accountability thing that I was talking about earlier, you know, is um, um, if you have if you if, if you have a family, if you have no, if, if you have a family, you have you do not have time to procrastinate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you have a family to take care of. Your, your own business to take care of, you know, meaning just, you know, if you work a nine to five or if you have a business or whatever, but there's no time for procrastination. Right. Procrastination is the thief of time. I just posted that this morning on my, I just posted something about procrastination today. Procrastination is the thief of time. Time, we can, time is something we can't never get back. Once it's gone, it's gone. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you, you have to, uh, uh, just really take advantage of the time that you have to do the things that you know that you know you are supposed to be doing mm -hmm. as a as a man. You know what I'm saying? So if you are responsible for you know yourself and your family, you don't have time to procrastinate. Mm -hmm. You know, procrastination means you know you really don't care about the outcome. Um, right. You know, your family eating or <laughs> your family having a roof over their head or the children being uh, nurtured and taken care of as, you know, as they should be, you know. So, um, you know, there's no time for that. Mm -hmm. And right. I think I when you when it comes to manhood, they should know a man 
should know that, you know, and do what needs to be done because he is the lead. He mm -hmm. is the lead. And if you're the lead, then you're leading by example. And if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing as the man, then then the, your woman is gonna follow suit. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna Absolutely. follow suit. And the children are the children are as well, you know. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you showing you you setting a good example, and, and that's really the issue, you know what I'm saying? A lot mm -hmm. of men, a lot of men that we see today didn't have good examples. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, they didn't see healthy relationships. They didn't grow up seeing healthy relationships. You know, if their father was there, the father may have been beating on the mama or may have been on uh, drugs. I mean, I saw a lot of that growing up. I saw a lot of families where the father or the mother may have been, um, you know, were, 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 were addicts or something like that. And, and, and it was just, you know, just dysfunction, a lot of dysfunction or whatever. But, you know, th that, you know, it's, it's like if he is doing everything that he's supposed to be doing, the family is going to follow suit with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Procrastination cannot be nowhere in the vocabulary. It can't be nowhere in, in that. You know what I'm saying? We don't have no time. Right. We're already so far behind. As black people, we already so far behind the eight ball as it is. We, You know what I'm saying? So men, black men, we have to get it together. We have to make sure we are leading by example so that the children and the and the and the woman the one your woman can follow suit and and y'all are you you you're you're um experiencing healthy relationships the children are, mm -hmm. are experiencing uh healthy childhoods and 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 um if you know you need um some mental help you need to be seeking that you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. and, and expressing that to your mate look you know i need to i think i need to talk to somebody you know, express that to your mate, you know, and, and it's that that's just all it is to it. Just being accountable, being accountable mm -hmm. and being responsible for what it is, you know, you need to be doing as the lead, as the mm -hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and I could have posed that question to all three of you because all three of you are busy women and sister Andrea, I wasn't going anywhere until you came back. I knew you were coming back. So <laughs> I could pose that question to all three of you because all three of you recognize procrastination and being lazy and those of us who are just, you know, making excuses. I want to, um, hmm. two comments that my, my brother Ashan said, he said, sometimes looking in the mirror is the it's scariest the view some people will see, man, he's speaking to me. Uh -huh. I didn't want uh, brother Garthia and I going, we're going to, we're going to really dig into to this, uh, tomorrow night, and and uh, I go down, and he also said, he said, now now notice now, brother Ashan said, looking in the mirror is one of the most scariest views. But here's the thing, mm -hmm. he said, I took my trauma and turned it into my children's triumph. Mm -hmm. He had a bigger vision. It wasn't about him, regardless of what he had to carry. He would not allow his children. To carry that same weight, he wouldn't allow. Well, I wouldn't say the same weight. He wouldn't allow. He wouldn't allow the the, the the pressure that was on him to be spilled out. Like I told you earlier, because I refused to look in here and see the problem. My girls and my wife. Now, it was never any physical, mental, or any spiritual abuse ever. But they knew that that was something going on with me. You know, I would get angry about something. I would always point the finger. It's their fault. It's their fault. And I remember being told one time, and I think uh, Chapman John told me this. He said, even if you're right, even if it is their fault, what are you going to do about it? Nope, I'll take that back. That's what my wife told me. My wife told me that. <laughs> he said, even if you're right, with everything that you're saying, what are you going to do about it? That's good. How is that going to affect us today? Right. Sister Andrea, I tell you, I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to be angry. I wanted to be mad, mm -hmm. and my mm -hmm. wife was giving me every excuse to come out of that. You know, every my wife was giving me uh, the help to come out of that, but I wanted to stay there. I wanted to be around people that would tell me it's okay. You all right, James? I didn't want them to go. I didn't want to get on the phone and call Coach Cece. No, I did not want that because she was going to tell me how to heal. I did not want to heal. I got comfortable in my mess, and I wanted to stay there. I did not want to. I didn't want. I did not want to hear Sister Andrea said. 
even though you are in a relationship for a long time, you still need to date your wife. I didn't want to hear that. Hey, we're married now. We're good. I don't need to improve in nothing. You know, I did not want to see Sister Shelley, and, and she told us her story. She went from, you know, being let go on the job and, and started her own company. You know, I didn't want to see that in front of me because that's Sister Shelley telling me it's possible. No, I didn't want to see that, Sister Andrea. I didn't want to hear it. It wasn't until I looked in here. So I'm going to end this with you. Before we go around the room, I'm going to give you an opportunity, uh, Sister Andrea. We talked about men not being vulnerable. We talked about men not opening up. We talked about men holding it in and literally destroying everything around us because we refuse to talk. We refuse to open up. Instead, it's much easier for me to blame you than it is to look at myself and say, look, I need help. I, I, when, you, when, you, when you went off, I had told him I was on TikTok. And I did, it was, it was a lip sync. And I'm telling you, it got 34, I see you smiling, Coach CC. I see, it got like 34,000 hits. And I had to let everybody know that's not me speaking. That was the Minister Farrakhan speaking. About 15 seconds. And in there, he said, there is no such thing as a no good woman. Every no good woman was made no good by a no good man. Now, I saw the entire speech in its entirety. Sister Andrea, when I tell you that they dragged me in the comment section, <laughs> and it was mostly men. One guy said, it ain't, it's not the man that made her a no good woman, it's a no good mother. I said, did you even listen to the speech? Listen to that. I said, I'm assuming her mother was a woman. Now go back and look at, listen to it again and stop viewing it from a narrow lens and catch the big picture that he's talking about and stop looking at it just a black thing. He said a no good man. He didn't specify race. Right. So as right. we talked about captivity and we talked about being conditioned and we talked about men being separated from women and being taught that a woman is the B word and the, and the, and is the, is the N word to the point where now we call each ourselves that. How do we begin to heal, Sister Andrea? How do we begin this healing? How can, because we need to hear from our mother. We need to hear from our sisters, our aunties. How do men begin to heal? Because even now while I'm talking, I'm getting emotional. How do wow. men begin to heal so I don't allow this trauma or this anger that I'm feeling to cause me to lose 25 years of marriage that mm. we built together? How do, I, how do I begin the healing process? Mm. Wow. Well, first, I'm going to try to be as brief, but y'all know I can go, I can be long-winded. I have 9%. And one phone went out and I'm on the next phone. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the first step is to be honest with self. Scripture says to thine own self be true. And there's a reason that, that self has to be first. See, here's the thing. Self is first in everything. You can't take care of your children, your spouse, your mama, your daddy, your sisters, your brothers until you take care of yourself. You can't take care of your community until you take care of yourself. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has a study guide that we study in the Nation of Islam and people in the community, and it's called Self-Improvement the Basis for Community Development. Not community development and then you can develop yourself. So we have to be honest with ourselves. Brothers, it's okay. Yeah, we need you to be strong, but guess what? You can't be strong until you're honest with yourself. And you say, man, you know, this right here is not right. I got to work on this. I need help working on this. Until our men can do that, and until we as women can do that. We are going to find ourselves in this perpetual cycle of being the oppressed and becoming the oppressor to people within our own community and our own families. Right. And that's how we become abusers. See, we don't have the power to because our admission is in control. We oppress the people we're supposed to protect. Wow. We we oppress the people who we are supposed to love. We oppress the people who depend on us. 
and then we tear them apart, not knowing that we're tearing ourselves apart. Right. So that's where we are. And the 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 solution is to be honest with self, to recognize and then that's the solution. Be open to being vulnerable and offering yeah. and receiving the repair. Right. Amen. Amen. So before we close out, I'm gonna go around the room. Right. Co CC. Yes, yes. Your your final words. Talk to us. Um, what do you want to say to us? And I, I, again, I appreciate you know you coming on, and uh, my definitely my condolences goes out to you and your family. So talk to us. What are your final words for us that we can begin to bring healing amongst each other? You know what? Tell us from a mother's perspective, a woman's perspective, what do you see in us and how can the men start to begin to heal inside the home as well as outside? All right. Um, so <laughs> keep my family in prayer, please. I'm just trying to be transparent mm -hmm. because, you know, what I'm witnessing during this, this hard um, time for, you know, those his children, his family. I, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes it extra tough. And um, it's because hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I joke and I say that I'm going to, I don't, I don't think I'm joking about this, but the four or five hour group text argument that went on yesterday, I think I'm going to send that transcript to Tyler Perry or 50 Cent or somebody. I'm about to blow up. I'm about to be a millionaire, y'all. Because <laughs> this has got to get into the movies. And that's, I mean, you know, all I kept saying in that text was, I mean, I was saying prayers. You know, you could clearly see my role. I was the diplomat, right? I was like, oh, look at the suit, you know? Nobody, everything I was saying was going over and people were just like pointing fingers and saying some evil things, right? And and I'm like, hurt people, hurt people, right? And all I kept saying was, if we could get to a place as a, as a people to just say, I need help and <laughs> sincerely seek it out, mind our business, right? take care of us, then the world around us would be a lot better. Um, I, when I speak to people, you know, your, your feelings are violent, right? You have a right to feel how you feel. So one minute down the day, I'm crying and I gotta re-put my lashes on. And then the next day I'm cracking up, right? And because I have a right to feel however I'm feeling however I'm going to manage through whatever I'm going through. And you don't have a right to tear somebody down. You don't have a right to just, you know, you, you can do what you want. You know, you can't. But it's, it's sad. And I just implore everyone to get the help that they need. Because at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a problem solver, right? I'm a chemist by trade. I'm a many things by trade. So, okay, what are we going to do right now? You said whatever. What are we going to do about it? And so that's what I want to know. What are we going to do about it? Like it's time to start being about it and doing something and not just keep talking about it. Right? So there's so many things. It's this work that I talk about. Right? That has to be done in order for us to get better as individuals and then us to get better as families and then us to get better as a community. But you have to first say, you know what? Hey, I have a problem. Hey, I'm hurt. Hey, I'm angry. Hey, I'm sad. And it's okay. And then get the help that you need. It's okay to have a therapist. It's, a, it's okay to have a counselor. It's okay to have a coach. And it's quite okay to keep them on the books, right? As Muhammad said, right? It's okay to keep everything else there. So if it's for you, you're, everything starts here in your mind. Why aren't you taking care of your mind? That doesn't even make sense, right? So that's, that's the work 
final words that I have to say, you know, I like to leave people with my WWW slam, which is, you know, in the beginning, everything starts with the word, right? And then with that word, there's a want. But in order to get what you desire, you have to do the work. You have to do the work. So yes. I, that's what I want to leave you all with. You're on mute. So how will people get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Facebook under Sharia Williams also have a, a program group for women only is the Life as You program group. I also have a, a page, fan page called Life as You. And you can reach me uh, in my email, sharia.williams at lifeasyou.org. And you can hit me up in the inbox as well. And so I welcome if anybody needs any assistance during this um, holiday time, during this, 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 this trying season or any time. You know, you could just give me a call and I'll be happy to talk with you. Amen. Amen. Sister Shelley, your final words. Um, just, you know, um, just the, the whole mental health is an issue, you know, and that that, that uh, we, we just really need to start admitting that and being vulnerable enough to admit that and seeking the help that we genuinely need you know um all of us are suffering from some kind of trauma you know and just like sister muhammad said um it is embedded in our dna because it's so many so many generations and generations and years and years hundreds of years of mm -hmm. trauma that we you know our ancestors have you know suffered from and we 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 have the you know we we carry in the, the bulk of the weight now you know, we can't, we still carrying it. So um, I think it's imperative that we um, recognize that when there is an issue like that, because it it, it does, it, it, it spills off into our relationships. It spills off into our professional life. It, it, it affects the children, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I will say this, I have been seeing in regards to what I've, what I'm seeing, you know, on social media and, and, um, you know, a lot of like personal, you know, friends of mine, there's a shift. There's definitely a shift happening where people are, um, understanding that mental health is important and, and they're not looking at it as a bad thing anymore. It's just that, you know, and they're actually taking advantage of, um, some of the resources that they have, you know, to, to get the help that they need. So, um, that's, that's definitely, you know, a, a very, uh, important factor in just building healthy relationships because if, you know, you can eat the kale, you can drink the alkaline water, you can exercise every day, you can wear your crystals around your neck, but if you ain't dealing with that stuff that's going on in your head, you come are on, not on. well, <laughs> you're not well, you're not well. OK, so we need to be taking care of that so we can be the people we need to be for our families, for our communities. You know, and um, I think that's all I have. So tell everyone and if you can uh, put it in the comment section, how can they get in touch with you? OK, um, you can reach me at uh, sun goddess underscore sense on IG, sun goddess dot sense on IG. Um, Sun Goddess Sense like page on Facebook, and um, my uh, my phone number is four zero four four three four seven nine six three, and the address to the store is forty one forty Jonesboro Road, booth two twenty five in Forest Park, inside the International Discount Mall. Okay, give that number one more time. My phone number. Mm -hmm. 404-434-7963. And if, you know, if you're interested in anything or whatever, just text me and let me know what it is you need in regards to, you know, healthy, um, healthy skincare, uh, therapeutic bath salts, um, you know, black seed oil, sea moss, stuff like that. So just, you know, text me and I get you together. Meet me at the store and I have it for you. And trust me, she will. Trust me. She wills. And um, uh, Sister Shelley, I really uh, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you um, taking time out of your, your busy schedule to come on. And I always love having you on. I really I really appreciate you and Brother Ken. I really do. And I thank you so much. 
No problem, problem, brother James. I thank you for having me, and um, I appreciate being here with these two beautiful sisters. It's always a pleasure. Likewise, it's always a pleasure, sister Muhammad. <laughs> and uh, pleasure, mine, sister, the honor. Amen. Nice meeting you, sister Cece. I'm sure we will be, uh, you know, seeing each other again. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, sister Andrea, final words. Oh, Did she freeze up on us? Right. Oh no. I think I think she did. Well, you know, she's a re she's a regular on her, so she's gonna come back on again. But ladies, um, again, I, I really thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on and join me. I knew this was gonna be a great night is it's one thing to have a conversation about um about um you know men's issues and what men go through but one of the things that i do want to do and i'm going to do this in the future and i know i'm going to get dragged a lot on this but it mm -hmm. doesn't matter but this is what i'm going to do i am going to start showcasing more men out there who are actually getting things done more relationships that are getting things done more women that are getting things done. And that is what I'm gonna use my platform for, whether it's here, whether it's on uh, any other social media site, because all we are seeing is the disconnect amongst us. And so when men begin to understand that if we go and get the help, even if you even if you don't seek out a coach, I think it was one of you that talked about, I think it was you coach, CC talked about the barbershop. Mm -hmm. Get back in the presence of some men who can actually put something in you. Just the other night when Brother Ken then was on, they gave me a task to go get this book, you know? And so I got to go get that book, you know? I got to get the book and I also got to start reading because these brothers talking about uh, having quizzes and all these things. Whatever I got to do to better myself as a man, that is what I'm going to start doing, you know? And so as far as the the hate and the uh, the criticism, the judgment, that don't that stuff don't bother me. I left that. I left that alone a long time ago, you know, because I feel like, okay, I got girls. I got girls, so my girls can't see me falling apart. Mm -hmm. If I'm hurting, I talk to somebody. I reach out to somebody, but I get the help that I need. I'm not a man that shies away from being vulnerable. I'm not a man that shies away from being tears I, uh, for crying. I heard a, a, a therapist say this in a session I was listening to. It was on a Zoom call. She said that one of the hormones that comes out of your eyes when you cry is stress hormones. And so many men hold that stuff in and we don't realize the damage that we're causing. It's causing health, health issues, heart attacks, all types of stress. Just my little time I was in the, uh, the hospital, I was able to ask doctors a lot of questions. And one of the things that they told me that's a big factor with men being in the hospital is stress. Not saying that women are less stressed. It's not what I'm saying. But one thing about women, at least majority of women, they go get the help that they need. They have their girls night out. They have their conferences. It just the other night, um, there was a conference on with um, Taraji P. Henson, where she was talking about mental health, okay? And so that's a discussion that all of us need to have. As men, we need to have that. So again, ladies, I appreciate all of you for, for coming on tonight. I appreciate everybody who watched this live show, whether you're watching live, watching a replay. I really do appreciate it. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, I will have on Garthion Muhammad, the, the husband of Andrea Muhammad, she may come on with him. You know, maybe we'll see. We'll see how that goes, however he wants to do it. But it's just going to be a powerful night. So, ladies, I really, really appreciate it. And I thank both of you. And I thank you as well, Andrea, for, uh, for coming on tonight. Yes. So, I'm going to end my show as I always end my show. Every day above ground is a blessed day. Every day you wake up, you have a choice. Don't allow your mood to dictate your day. Just because you're in a bad mood, doesn't mean you have to exhibit bad behavior. I love you, family. Always remember, God is with you. God loves you, and so do I. Until next time, till tomorrow night, take care of yourselves. Peace. Peace.